Hello, gentle viewers. This is Avindian, welcoming you to Out of the Park Baseball 22 with the St. Louis Cardinals. Um, so, just as we have for the previous few teams, we're going to be taking over the Cardinals for 10 years and see how many championships we can win. I'm not necessarily going to sell out the future, just in order to uh why am i clicking wrong buttons i'm sorry friends i'm trying to click history and i keep clicking the wrong button oh that's not nice i thought for a minute it crashed there uh just as we have before we're going to try to win a world series within that 10 year period ideally multiples and we've actually managed it more often than not. The only team that we've ever played for and never won the World Series uh, was Detroit. We did try. And Brooklyn. Because Brooklyn fired me and we shall never speak of them again. It wasn't that bad. Um. So, um... We inherit a roster that has a ton of promise, including the number eight prospect in all of Major League Baseball, Dusty Cook. <clears throat> we have veteran Memphis Bill Terry, who's had an exceptional career. He's no Jim Bottomley, but he's all right. We have a load of other veterans. So our task with the Cardinals isn't so much going to be rebuild as reload. We want to address the team's shortcomings clearly, but at the same exact time, we also want to make sure that... Give me just a second here. Uh, we also want to make sure that we aren't selling the future to pay for the, the, past, the present. And while we have a ton of excellent top-tier players on our roster. There's not really much help coming in the minors. And that's less good. So we're going to need to identify uh, places where we just don't need players anymore and then trade them in the hopes of filling other holes on the roster. Because there are some. We have a lot of quality players, but a lot of them tend to be on the older side. Uh, if we take a look here at all batters and we look at the default, no, it's not what I want. No, actually it is what I want. If we sort by overall here, we see a lot of 30 plus year olds in here. And some of them have just been replaced by better players. Like Dusty Cook is better than Ray Blades. It's not even particularly up for debate. <clears throat> and although Ray Blades had an outstanding season, I think we've probably gotten what we're going to out of him. So one of the early decisions we're going to want to make is what we end up doing with him. Now we do have a big downside, which is that our draft pick isn't great. If we'd say it is the Braves, we would have had a better draft pick, but oh well. And we also have a scout that favors ability, I do believe. Oh, that's the team trainer. Yeah. He's not great, and I'll be honest with you, we'll probably let go of him. Um, as soon as we can. I want to fire him now. Like, it's not that he's bad. It's that we're going to need good scouting in the amateurs if we're going to be successful. I'm going to fire you. I should have checked to see if there were better scouts available, but I didn't think to do that. Mistakes were made. Ah, Frank Hemphill. You seem like an excellent sort. Uh, 
Although Pickett's even better. Yeah, we're going to hire Dave Pickett. And hopefully address that issue. Uh, what about other personnel? I do need a new double-A pitching coach. So I'm just going to promote people up the chain for right now. And then we'll worry about replacing them later if there is a benefit to that. And then give me coaching ratings. John Hollison, I guess, is all right. He's not my favorite, but he's not the worst either. Yes, I know you signed with the Broker Robbins because I, I don't want your stupid players. Okay, I'm glad that you're here. Perfect. All right. I'm going to immediately look at the scouting budget that you've been given, realize how much freaking money I have to toss around, and I'm going to give you the max budget. I have no reason not to. I almost gave $5,700. Yikes. $57,000. And I'm going to basically do 40 30 30 like there is no international scouting why would i spend any money on it i think this is a good budget we have a pretty established team so i want to make sure that we've got a close eye on the other major league teams uh and then we're going to immediately allocate fifty-seven thousand dollars to player development and this is basically a cheat code and that I don't know why the AI wasn't doing this already. Um, okay. This is fine. And we just need to make some, some upgrades to the team. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let my scout get acclimated with the team before I start making player decisions. We have a guy that favors tools, and that's maybe not a great fit for a team like ours, where we, where we care more about what the player can do for us right now. But it's fine. Johnny Bates. There's not much separating Donnie Bush from Terry Turner, and I think they both have the same issue, which is that neither one of them is actually very good, but they look great because they're shortstops. Yeah, I'm not going to vote for either of them until the market corrects itself. I do like Vin Campbell, but Centerfield happens to be pretty stacked at this point. And he was, let's not sugarcoat it, a pretty bad center fielder. Um, which definitely hurts his case, because otherwise I think he'd have a fair shot at it. Um, I'm not going to vote in a reliever at this time. Ed Rulebach. I want to be the reason he doesn't make the haul, but I'm also not convinced that he deserves it. 
Like, I feel very strongly that Johnny Bates belongs in the Hall of Fame, and I equally feel very strongly that nobody else here really does. Like, my life would not be immeasurably cheaper if, say, Jack Coombs made it. But I also don't care, uh, is the big issue. I mean, Frank Baker, again, maybe. But what I'm kind of treating as my deal breaker are the different awards here. Which would argue for a guy like Frank Lang. I will vote for Maury Rath. I don't know if that's going to help, but he was an outstanding third baseman for a very long time. And he wasn't the greatest hitter, but he also wasn't bad. And this is an era where third base defense matters an awful lot. It's getting to the point where it matters a lot less. But I'm just going to vote for these two guys. I'm becoming sort of a snob, but I guess that's life. All right. Draft time. There are some wonderful players here, and I have no illusions that any of them will fall to us. Uh, Scouty and McScouterson, have you had a chance to scout these people? You have. Good work. Our scout is not enthusiastic about our possibilities, which is totally fair, right? We have kind of a bad draft pick. So we're going to be getting people in this range, and then it's just going to come down to who's going to be the most useful to us. All right. So, let us take a look, because it seems like the best batters available to us are both second basemen. How are we at second base right now? Frankie Frisch is an outstanding defender that is just not going to hit for much longer. Like, his ratings are pretty terrible, right? He's basically an average contact hitter. And yes, he hit 310 last season. But we would be utterly stupid to imagine he's going to do that every season. Or even most seasons. Or even any season. So what do we actually have? Now, first of all, we do have the choice over relief pitcher. And our bullpen is not very good, I believe is the technical term. But it's also not awful. And I have enough interesting-ish players in the high minors that I don't want to waste a first-round pick on a reliever. So let's immediately go ahead and just go for batters. And then we have... A pretty high quantity of players that are all right around the same raw talent level. Tony Piet or PA or Piet or Pete. I'm going to say Piet because that makes the most sense to me. Seems like a second baseman, second baseman, right? He's got decent contact, decent power, a decent glove with high adaptability, a great work ethic, and he's considered a spark plug. So we're thinking he'll be average. So let's 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 pencil his name in as a maybe and let's keep looking. Bad news hail. Very smart, decent hitter. Not that great. G. Walker. Very, very fast. Good all-around offensive tools. Plays left field. Left field is occupied. For the, for the foreseeable future. 
In fact, I don't even want any outfielders. So let's look at infielders. I want outfielders removed from the equation. And now we're really starting to dig in to the best choices here. We also have Billy Jurgis. Who's arguably a better third baseman than second, than shortstop. And we don't have a great third baseman. Like, Fred Haney is excellent for now, but he won't be great always. And then we have Marv, Freck, Owen, who's whatever. Um, hardly any of these players moved the needle this year. As long as Frisch continues to be an outstanding defender and win gold gloves, if his bat is near league average, I'm going to take that. And it wasn't, but he's not far removed from a season in which he was actually below replacement level. So a new everyday starter at second base isn't a terrible idea. So that would argue pretty pretty substantively that we pick up Piet. His defense isn't ad, isn't ideal, but it's good enough, and he's a better hitter. At the very least, he's a good bench off the bat, and he could be more than that once he's gotten into our system. If we can start improving him and developing him. There really isn't any player here besides Jurgis that I might consider taking. Jurgis is a good third base shortstop. How are we at shortstop? We're old at shortstop, but with an amazing defender. And again, he's been hitting a round league average, and that's really all I need out of a shortstop. I see no reason to focus on him. So I think it's going to come down to Piet. I think he's just the best choice. Um, I'm going to pick draft player, and I'm going to check the mock draft. The mock draft side, we would take Rez Schulmerich. But I think someone already drafted him. No, huh? Oh, that's all right. Oh, that's right. I didn't take Schulmer because I don't want outfielders. Let's auto draft. Okay. I now want to add a pitcher. And we have two possibilities. We have Hal Schumacher and we have Jim Peterson. First of all, let's be real, our rotation is not good. It's not bad, it's not good. And it is not a rotation that is full of young top-line talent. And there's not a lot coming to us in the minors. So there's a lot of sense in drafting one Hal Schumacher. There's almost too much sense. Let's take him. And we'll see how he turns out. Jim Peterson falls in the third round. I see no harm in using a third round draft pick to improve it, to improve our bullpen. Norman is a decent outfielder, but doesn't hit. I'm going to take Norman for the simple fact that he's not a bad center fielder. And not bad center field can give you a decent major league career. And then we're already at basically the, the bottom tier players. This is not a great draft, so I'm not as upset that we had a bad pick in it. And we're just going to find out to see if we have any like secret megastars. We don't. So let's complete the draft. Mm -hmm. 
so we definitely need starting pitching. If we are going to be successful, we need starting pitching. And we have Pat Malone, who's excellent, led the NL in war last season and did so two years ago. And then I have a few starters who are right around the same level of just barely acceptable. And then we've got a decent bullpen full of characters who can fill roles of with varying success levels. Um... Our most marketable player right now is Ray Blades. So let's see what's on the trade market if I want a starting pitcher. It's really just more mediocre players. And that's our issue. It's just more mediocre players. Is there, like, another position I can make a significant upgrade at? I could bring in Dick Cox, uh, but we don't need a right fielder. Just looking for greens right now, and I'm not really seeing it. And I don't really want to piss away... Ray Blades to get a, a reliever, no matter how good that reliever is. I just don't see that as very sensible. So, Blades isn't that interesting. We're going to wait, and I think we're going to trade once we see who actually makes the team out of spring training. We're just going to be a bit circumspect right now until we know what's happening. I definitely want to grab a reliever in the Rule 5 draft, though. Or a starter if there is one. Does Blade Holder have much of a future with us? Like the 40 man is full, right? But I can easily clear off some names here. That are just not very good players. Like Bobby Lamont. Like, I don't want to lose Blayholder, but on the other hand, I don't really feel a compulsion to protect him in the Rule 5. Linton, you are not very good. You are not very good. This is just me clearing Deadwood off of major league roster anyone below 30 doesn't deserve to be on this team and even most of the 30s don't deserve it. like tyson can't hit wave andy wower you haven't even played in the majors i don't know why we're keeping you either Freddie Spurgeon is a mediocre second baseman who will never be more than that. Like, I don't know why these players are even on the 40-man roster to begin with unless they just didn't have a choice and someone got hurt. I've got 13 players that are pitchers. I'm inclined to leave this alone for right now. Let's go to the Rule 5 draft. What do we got here? I can easily grab a pitcher like a George Smith 
or a gym right. Who's my worst reliever right now? It's Burwell. And there's a couple others. And Penner are both pretty bad. Let's go ahead and grab George Smith. Let's give him a chance in the majors that no one else will. And then I'll complete the draft. Oh, I think I have to designate them for assignment first. What is your issue, Dean? Do you just not want to be demoted? Then how about I offer you this idea? I, I trade you. I was actually going to say I was going to release him. But he's a little too valuable to just cut if I can get someone of greater value. And let's just see what we're being offered for him. Man, you really don't like Dennis Burns, do you? Did he like crap in your cornflakes? Yeah, let's pick up Dennis Burns if they're that desperate to get rid of him. And then I can take players and demote them as we need to. Are we going to get Wadi at all this season? Uh, we might by opening day. I am finding it just so absurd that the voters are not putting in Johnny Bates. I don't know what further he has to do. Like, okay, I get why he's not being voted in. He doesn't have big hit totals and he didn't hit a lot of home runs. But he's a Hall of Famer because he got on base a shit ton. And he was an incredible fielding right fielder. Like he was worth 10 wins above replacement as a right fielder. That's not nothing. And he should definitely be getting his vote share increasing. But it's actually just staying steady, which might mean he's just doomed right now. It is what it is. I'm delighted you're increasing my budget, but I also don't care because I can't really do anything with it. But thanks, bro. You're a real mensch. All right, it is spring training time. <clears throat> we need a starter. Every waking moment we don't have a starter, we are crippling our chances of making the playoffs this season. Like, a pitcher like a Jumbo Elliott or a Jake Miller is just miles better than my lowest placed option. I could probably get Wilbur Cooper for a song. 
No, you actually want something quite decent. Uh, I'm not doing that. I'd rather take Jumbo Elliot, who's like 10 years younger. Alright, so this doesn't really do much for you. That's fine. So I'm going to begin by offering you Ray Blades. And... Roy Carlisle? Like, this is actually making them harder to move him. So then here's what this tells me. Oh my gosh. Stop. Where's Blayholder now? Yeah, so Blayholder has pretty decent stamina. I think he and Schumacher can both uh, get some reps in spring training and see if either of them might be a starter for the future. Schumacher's got loads of potential, and I know we just drafted him, but... I really don't see... Like, I think he makes us better right now. Which isn't an easy thing to say, but it happens to be true. Uh, Peterson... I want Piet to get a full year in the minors to see if there might be more to him than this. But other than that, I'll just do this just to fill up the 40 man and then give me my pitching staff, please. Give me everything, please. Okay, game. How can you be this delusional? What is it? <sighs> he is a good all-around hitter. He really, truly is. But Clark is better. Like, no ifs, ands, or buts. Clark is better than Rotger. And it's not Roker's fault. Or Wrecker. It's probably Wrecker. He is from St. Louis, so, you know, hometown boy, etc., etc. But he's just been lapped. It happens, right? And I don't feel any particular desire to force him in the lineup, but I don't mind him playing in spring training. Uh, spring training is always a good chance for people to do things, and then we'll figure something out to do with him later on. Okay. Waddy Clark, you'll be out in five, you'll be back in five to six weeks. I'm just going to put you on the 60 day injured list. I don't, I don't see a whole lot of value in keeping you on the main roster.
Um, how many pitchers do I have? I have 18 pitchers. I do not need 18 pitchers. Levison, I'm going to set you up as a starter for right now just because you're better than Blayholder. No, you don't. Oh, really? Huh. Cooper to the Miners, Penner to the Miners, Kupal to the Miners, what are we looking at here? 14 players still. I want to carry six starters until Clark is healthy. I don't want that to change. Uh, no Harry Smythe. I don't even know why he was on the roster. I think Kern is better served by getting regular appearances in the majors more than keeping him in, or in the minors and keeping him in the majors. This brings me to 12 pitchers. I'd like to get rid of one more. Goodbye, Raleigh. This does mean that both Schumacher and Blayholder make the opening day roster. I'd really like to upgrade its starter, though. It's just a question of what I can afford to give up to get there. Position players. He's a backup first baseman. I don't have high expectations for him. Um, Joe Munson offers nothing. So long. I've got too many outfielders, and I really need to pair Retker and Blades and see what that might get me. Like, I don't want to empty out the miners, but this is probably my best choice as far as getting genuine upgrades to the roster. Just kidding, apparently. Okay, Percy Jones has control issues, but it le has at least been fairly consistent. But that control is, is pretty garbage. I mean, surely I can do better. I could grab Boardwalk Brown. Like, one season ago, he was still an incredibly valuable starting pitcher. His walk rate did go up. And I mean it spiked, and his strikeouts went down significantly. And he is 42. But it's also difficult, nay, nigh impossible to argue that it'd be better than two of my current starters. 
Maybe three of them. And maybe beggars can't be choosers. What about your peripherals, Percy Jones? Now, can we make this a bigger trade? Like, you're probably not going to give up most of your starters. Like, that seems... It would be pretty silly for you to say, give me Tommy Thomas. And I'd have to give up someone pretty big for that. But what about like an Elon Hogsit? I like having Carlisle off the bench. But you can have Bill Sizzle. Okay, fair. I was trying. Look, I, I thought it was worth a shot. Didn't pan out. But it was really hot. I'm going to make this trade. This is just trading from strength in order to shore up a weakness. I don't know you say it's not in our best interest, but I don't have anything I can get, I don't think. Like, Les here isn't an exciting draft pick. He's not eligible anyway. Yeah, the, there's just no talent here. So I'm just going to pull the trigger on this trade. But apparently the fact that we have Boardwalk Brown is everything we could want and more. Um... So I'm going to get rid of Blayholder. He does not have to be on the 40-man roster, but fine. This doesn't make any sense to me. He, has, he didn't actually... He shouldn't have a major league contract. Because he was in the minors, right? I don't really want to get rid of Blayholder, though. I'd rather, say, Wave Levison and Stewart. Because not one of them is that great. And this way, the pressure is a little bit off of Schumacher. And then I can have Blayholder fill in as the next man up. Uh, pitching is fine. Lineup. I still need to dispose of two players. I mean, I don't need to dispose them. I'll, like, take them out back and, and shoot them in the face. But Brandon, Miners... This is really the best we've got. Like you're having a laugh, right? The bats, this is cream of the crop backup shortstop. He sucks. Like very badly. I frankly don't know what happens if, if someone gets hurt because Goodness knows. 
I'm not going to keep him. I need to get another position player, probably an outfielder. I like Chris and Barry's ability to draw walks. But Brooks gives us so much power off the bench. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna wave Mr. Kristen Berry here. And now we're down to twenty-five. A nice Svelte Major League roster. Let's get going. All right, Pat Malone is clearly our ace. No dispute. But then it really is like a question of who's number two. I think I'm going to do Marbury, Brown. Hogsit and Schumacher. Lay holder as kind of Sunday starter, sixth starter guy. Uh, we can make Fred High mock the stopper. I don't mind that. And then I definitely want Dennis Burns as middle relief used more often. I'm going to go eighth in close game just because I'd rather stretch out the starter another inning in this era than turn it over to the bullpen too early. And there we go. Now, very important, we don't have Jim Bottomley, but we do have Bill Terry. And I gotta say that the idea of anyone else hitting third just doesn't make sense to me. So Bill Terry hits third. And then we have this interesting problem, whereas I only had one genuine power hitter besides Cook. Who oh, maybe Cook is more of like a fit, like a, a cleanup guy. Because he hits, he's got decent contact, but it's mostly his power and his play discipline are what are going to get him through his career. So Cook can hit cleanup. Ethan Allen has fantastic gap power, so I'd actually rather he hit second. And then I think Johnny Watwood is our leadoff hitter. Because Watwood has a really good on-base eye. Um, who hits fifth? Is it Fred Haney? I think it is Fred Haney. Holliker hits sixth. Frisch, 7th. Phillips is a much better catcher. Hentline is a much better hitter. So I'm going to take the better defender. And then we're going to generate a new depth chart around him. I don't mind playing Henline with some frequency, but I don't think he needs to be getting that much playing time. I think once a week is enough.
Uh, once opening day rolls around, I'm going to check the waiver wire and see if we can't grab a better shortstop to, to back up. I'll also check for starting pitchers, of course, but something tells me those won't be available. Uh, so we're going to add Schumacher, Peterson. I'm not going to play Holder yet because he's going to be the first man out if I do get a good waiver claim. Uh, let's do Starter. I could just grab Flint here. And make him my sixth starter. But I think I'd rather have Blay Holder. Try that out. I'm going to do... I'm going to use my good fielding shortstop. Alright, here we go. <clears throat> I will happily take an Emmett McGann. Emmett McCann. So do that's what Blay Holder on the roster, and I'm okay with that. I'll put him on the 40 man for now. By the way, OTP, if you'll let me shop two players, why am I having, why can't I just pick two players and then hit shop two players? Doesn't make sense, amigo. I'm just looking to see if there's... Okay, there's not. Fair enough. Goodbye, Jim Levy. Line up. All right. Lloyd Christenberry. I'm not saying I dislike you, but you have exactly one tool. So, goodbye. And if other people want to come, want to claim you and take, take you off my hands, then by all means. Okay, Roy. I feel you. But shut up. That is... That is my counterpoint to you. And your, your question. Shut up. Ooh, Peterson's throwing harder. Very nice. Schumacher's improving his control a bit. Clark is slipping a tiny bit, but that's not the worst. And we also get five out of six. For Mr. Watwood here. 
Only one of them wasn't a single, but you know what? He He's here to get on base. He's not necessarily here to hit, say, 500. Okay, this is troubling. You're on a real cold streak. You are Mr. Terry. Like, Frisch, I don't expect anything from you. I expect you to play really good second base and not totally embarrass yourself with the bat. But it's only, it's still very, very early in the season. So we will, we'll give it another month before making any changes. I don't respect that because you're a terrible catcher. Okay, Waddy Clark is going to be an absolutely massive upgrade to the rotation. I mean, I'm going to have to try to get Blayholder through waivers, but I think I can probably manage that, I hope. And you're going to take Brown's uh, job. And then we're going to... Mr. Brown, we're going to let you be the sixth starter. one week uh just give boardwalk brown another start Blayholder did clear waivers that does make me happy because i didn't want to like get rid of him i just don't want him on the roster right now really waddy clark just all of a sudden looks like absolute garbage what changed Like, I know your stuff isn't great, but your control is actually significantly better. I mean, you, true, you have lost some of your stuff and a fair bit of movement, but I'm not willing to give up on you just yet. Improving your batting eye is only going to help, my friend. So, on the one hand, we have an absolutely outstanding start to the season. On the other hand, I am pretty badly concerned about this rotation. I'd love to get another couple of good starters. So maybe as, as we advance a little bit, something will open up. But I'm, I'm kind of worried, kind of really worried about our rotation. So you're asking for one of my best players to give me Jake Miller. So <clears throat> I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to I'm not going to throw away my future. When actually having kind of a bad season now would actually be really good timing. I'm alone. And Ethan Allen both made it. Buzz Arlet? Who the hell is Buzz Arlet? 
Oh, they took him ninth overall. Damn, wish we wish we could have gotten him. Oh well. Like, I don't mind if we bottom out this season. I really don't. I'd almost prefer it. Okay, we've got to make some, some coaching decisions here. Let's do that. No staff rolls. All right, so who is up? All right, let's look at Warren Gill. <clears throat> Gill is good at teaching mechanics and good at teaching defense, but he's not the best at development, and I have a feeling we could probably do better than him on the open market. So I think we let Gil walk. Jack Bliss is an outstanding hitting coach for an older roster, but he doesn't actually teach hitting that well. I think I let him go too. Joe DeLahanty is bad at teaching pitching. Why is he my, my coach? Oh, Dale Hanty is my pitching coach. He is my first base coach. He still sucks. Like, I'm still not keeping him. So I'm going to let all them guys walk. Uh, Art Madison. I can do better in a hitting coach. You can walk. Sean O'Brien is actually a better hitting coach than he is a pitching coach. Can I just appoint you as hitting coach in double A? Oh, he'll only take a promotion. I see. Well, I'm going to keep you for now, Mr. O'Brien, but with the objective of making you the hitting coach in triple A next season. In fact, can I just do it now? No, he doesn't want to be a hitting coach. I don't know why you suck at pitching, but whatever. You're not the worst. Ah, yes. A hitting coach that can't teach hitting. That's that's what every team needs. Yeah, we're going to do some major overhaul of the coaching staff this offseason, I think. I don't care how discouraged you are, you unbelievable asshole. Just stop complaining. I'll tell you what. I will offer you in trade. And if I get the right offer, I will trade you. If I don't get the right offer, you're trapped. Johnny Schulte is a terrible catcher, so I'll I'll thank you not to offer him to me. I could just go super ridiculous bullpen, but I don't really think that's the right call here. Yeah, there's like a bunch of players here who are fine, but there's not anyone here that I'm willing to go to the wall for. So I will take your request under advisement. And tell you to stick it up your ass. That's that's how we roll here in St. Louis. Things are happening there. Not Ty Tyson.
Well, if how our team chemistry is still ecstatic, even though we have lots of players that are complaining all the time. Oh, Boardwalk Brown is retiring. Hey, Schumacher got a shutout. Very nice. <clears throat> Three weeks for Watwood. Well, this is Roy Carlisle's chance to get some regular playing time. I'm not going to put him on the IL because I just don't have anybody that can fill the role. You know why you're not getting a chance to prove yourself? Because I've got players that are better than you. Nope. Everyone just really needs to just shut up. Like, I'm, I'm tired of hearing from you about how sad you are that you're not starting anymore. That's because I only play good players, and you're not good players anymore. Rejected. Wait until I trade Frankie Frisch next season. Then you'll really love me. <clears throat> I don't know that I'd trade him. I would probably honestly just give him less playing time. Make him a backup. But yeah, you guys think you're complaining. I am... I am... Quite honestly, I am not playing someone just because you're a veteran. That's not how I run teams. See, Waddy Clark figured his shit out. As I expected. Dusty Cook looks amazing. Good stuff all around. Okay, Lefty Stewart, your face is going to haunt me for the remainder of my life. Like, look at that. That's horrifying. It looks like you don't have a beard. Like, you just eat lots and lots of Cheetos. Just constantly, like, bags full at a time. Mm. <laughs> Bony. Ah, oh, classic. Okay, so so Tony Piet might be ready for the majors. I'm willing to make that that claim. I mean, he's hitting 500 with zero doubles, which is. Pretty impressive. This is just a weird season, right? But I mean, he's more than capable of handling himself in the major leagues. Uh, I'm probably going to promote him just because there's no sense in paying a major league salary yet. Not when I have control over him for a while longer. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and promote him next season. Um, That makes sense to me. All right. And it's the Red Sox and the Giants, and the Giants won handily. Just stop talking, Roy Carlisle. Cease your speaking.
Thanks. Aww. Oh, wait, Houston is my team. Hooray. Ahem. <clears throat> Okay, wow. Like, a bunch of my coaches retired. Like, so many coaches retired. All right, Harry. You're an okay hitting coach. I'm promoting you. Oh, that was the issue, right? Okay. All right. Let's start making some coaching hires. And then we'll end the episode. But let's look at how, how things went for the team this season. Our good players were good. They were very good. Uh, Fred Haney was a tiny bit disappointing, but not unreasonably so. Walt Wood had some injury problems, but otherwise did a good job, I think. No, he didn't. Yeah, I don't know what your issue was this season. Please fix this. This is not okay. You're a leadoff guy. You should be getting on base a lot more. Let me for a look at pitching. Schumacher held his own as a rookie. Like, our rotation was not the strength of this team, and nor was it expected to be. But we actually got pretty decent seasons out of our rotation. And... Dennis Burns and Fred Heimach proved to be excellent relievers. So, this is good. This is not perfect, but this was good. And I think we need another couple of, of frontline players to really turn this team into a possible World Series winner. Right now, we're 500. And 500 may not be ideal, but it's also not the end of the world. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and start putting together better coaching staff across the board, beginning with our bench coach. Now, I do want to look at Ben Conroy and then stop looking at Ben Conroy. How is Johnny Lavin, like, not even getting a chance in the majors? Like, I would instantly make you my bench coach. Like, that is the easiest choice I will have all day. Matthews is just better. Boom. 
first base coach. I want really good teachers. Notice I'm not even looking at chemistry right now. I just want the best possible coaches. And then we will think about what to do from there. Bill Thomas. I'm a wild dog. Uh, Mr. Kadore here. I would be over the moon if I could get you to be our guy. Let's pick Ping here, just because he's got a good name. I would love to grab both of these coaches, and I have a sneaking suspicion I won't be able to. But we're going to see. <gasps> Mike E. Smith? Oh, I cannot miss that opportunity. To have Mike E. Smith? That's, that's what dreams are made out of. Yeah, we could have a truly exceptional coaching staff um, if everyone signs. And if they don't, we'll figure something else out. But I like it. So our first season went okay. It could have gone better and it could have gone worse. Um, our biggest obstacle, you. Johnny Watward, I don't know what happened to you this season. I'm hoping you figure it out because this is not acceptable. Uh, I picked you as a leadoff hitter for a reason and you failed pretty badly at it. <clears throat> and I guess that's the one good news, right? The one good piece of news. None of these players seem like they played out of their minds this season. There's every realistic possibility that what we have this season can get better next season. Because um, everyone pretty much played in line with their career so far, including Bill Terry. Who maybe had a year that was like 3% better than normal, but not by a huge amount. Uh, Charlie Holliker had a good season, but he's had good seasons. We still really need to start adding more talent to the minor leagues, though. Hey, good, good job, Cyclones. But our bullpen really struggled, but I have to think a lot of that was uh, Ed Appleton, who just did not pitch well at all. We'll worry about that later. Until next episode and next time, this has been Avindian. Thank you for watching, and I bid you good day.